Welcome back to the Thoughtful Techie YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the six advantages of AWS Cloud. If you're new here, we talk about AWS Cloud Computing Best Practices, and I help you on your AWS Cloud journey, help you to understand AWS Cloud, so let's go. Number one is trade fixed expenses for variable expenses. Now, what does that even mean? So in an on-premises, what you used to have to do was to invest a lot of money in upfront capital. I used to be a sysadmin way back in the day. And every time we needed a new piece of infrastructure, you just couldn't go into a store and buy that off the shelf. These aren't computers that they sell uh, on the street where you just walk into a store and go get something. These are high-end servers with a lot of specialized equipment. Some of it is very proprietary. A lot of this stuff gets back ordered. A lot of this stuff has to be made just in time. There's no inventory just sitting around. That's how a lot of servers work. In the cloud, what happens is whatever you need is already on tap and available for you. What would happen is back in the day, you had to fork out large amounts of cash to order all this infrastructure and wait several weeks, many times months before that infrastructure would land in your data center. In the cloud, you switch from that capital upfront expense to variable expense, meaning the new model is you spin up the resources you need when you need them. So for example, if I need some servers after I record this YouTube video, I can go ahead and spin that up in AWS, no problem. And I can have a full complete environment in a matter of minutes, not months. And then when I'm done with that environment, that all goes away. And the billing associated with that resource goes away as well. Now let's talk about massive economies of scale. At first, this sounds super sophisticated. Before I explain how it works in AWS, I'm gonna use an example. Let's say you're going into Chipotle, all right, to get a burrito. Now in Chipotle, they have multiple different kinds of uh, meat and veggies, so you can get uh, beef, chicken, pork. If you're vegetarian, you can get uh, fajita vegetables and tomatoes and uh, black beans or pinto beans and rice and brown rice, all this stuff. And you go and order whatever you want, whether it's a burrito or a burrito bowl, and you get whatever you want on there, multiple toppings, and you go pay for it, and it's about, I don't know, like 11 bucks, right? Now, imagine if you had to go to the grocery store and to buy the tomatoes, the chicken, the onions, the seasoning, the oil, uh, spend the time uh, and resources to slice and dice it, to chop it, the electricity to, uh, to cook it, or the natural gas to, uh, to cook it up. In AWS, it works in similar fashion. You get to leverage AWS's massive economies of scale, all the infrastructure that they buy for millions and millions of customers. You get to take advantage of all the regions, all the availability zones, all the edge locations, and you can spin up resources for only when you need them for the amount they charge. Some EC2 instances are literally sub $1 uh, an hour to use. So this is how you can benefit from those massive economies of scale. Number three, you get to stop guessing capacity. I worked in an on-premises data centers for a number of years before I jumped into the cloud when I first launched my career. And the one thing that I can guarantee you no one knows that's working in a data center is how much capacity they need. You believe you think you know how much capacity you need, but guess what? In a data center, you always tend to over-provision your resources because you know what? If I'm the sysadmin or you're the sysadmin in a data center and your boss tells you to go and order some servers or order some storage and you go and order just what you need, kind of like Goldilocks, just get what you need. What happens when you have unexpected demand? 
that's called either a degradation of service or if the threshold of demand exceeds capacity, that's called an outage. And that's going to happen on your watch. That's why in an on-premises world, how much capacity you needed was a guessing game. Always had to over provision. In the cloud, what happens is, is your cloud provider, in this case, AWS, has almost virtually unlimited capacity. So when you need resources, you spend them up when you need them. And when you don't, you let them go. So that's the great thing about not having to guess capacity anymore. Number four, speed and agility. Believe you me, speed in business matters. And being able to pivot when something's not working matters as well. Now, I think by now you should be able to guess while the cloud makes you more speedy and agile. And the reason that is, is because, like I mentioned earlier, in an on-premises world outside of the cloud, when you had to order some infrastructure, it could take weeks, if not months. Then once that infrastructure landed, you had to rack and stack, power it up, find space in the data center and all this other stuff, find the people to do that. And only then was that infrastructure turned over to the development teams. You cannot fail fast in that situation. If you have a bad idea, you've wasted weeks, if not months, before that feedback loop closes and you realize, wait a second, we need to make changes. In terms of agility in the cloud world, let's say you want to do a proof of concept. You can gather a team of developers right now to proof of concept something over a couple of days, prove out whether or not that was a great idea or not. And if it wasn't a great idea, you can pivot very quickly and try something different. That plays to the point of being agile. Number five, stop wasting money on data centers. There's a term I like to use. It's called undifferentiated heavy lifting. Maintaining a data center is respectable work. It takes a lot of technical skills and a lot of energy to maintain a data center. I used to do that in a former life for many years. But guess what maintaining a data center is not going to enable you to do? Maintaining a data center is not going to enable you to be innovative. In fact, your customers don't care how well you maintain the data center. All they care about is what they can see and feel in the applications and services you develop. If you have a finite amount of resources, as we all do, time, money, and energy, and staff, when you are spending that energy having your teams maintain data centers and cooling and racking and stacking, that's time you're taking away from being innovative and differentiating the apps and services that you make in the market. In the AWS cloud, there are no data centers to maintain, so you get to focus on innovating on behalf of your customers. And last but not least, number six, going global in minutes. Let's say you start off your application or service in North America. Back in the days when you used to have a data center, can you imagine how much of a hassle it was trying to find a physical space in another state or let alone another country? It would blow your mind. In AWS, the regions and availability zones are already there spread about across the globe. So whether or not you want to run EC2 in Northern Virginia or Australia, those services and many more are already there. And you can build your applications and services to the same spec as you do in North America, as you can in Europe. Being able to go global in minutes is not only something that's great from a speed and agility perspective, but also being able to go to global in minutes allows you to put your applications and services very close to your customers so that that increases their performance and lowers their latency. Well, we've reached the end of the video. Please drop a comment and provide your feedback on what you liked in this video and make sure you subscribe for more videos on AWS cloud computing and well-architected best practices. 
I'll see you in the next video. Take care.